Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Jared. And I'm Brady, and this month we are learning all about humility. And humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. So let's get it. Hey everybody, welcome to Trinity Kids Online. And this week we are continuing our series, Community Garden. Well Brady, I heard that you started a garden. Oh yeah, I have. What are you growing? Well, obviously cucumbers. Cucumbers? Why cucumbers? Well, Jared, they're just the best fruit, bro. Of course. Fruit? Yeah. Best? What? Duh, dude, of course they are. What do you mean, duh? How are they a fruit? Well, this is a unique trait that allows us to ex us to experience gardeners to tell if there's this fruit, they're a fruit or vegetable. Fruit or vegetable. Yeah. Okay, well, so here we go. Think. Okay, are please, you sure are you ready? yeah, I'm ready, here we go. Well, a fruit distinctly have seeds on the inside, making it a fruit. Oh, well, that was actually pretty simple, but that still doesn't answer why cucumbers are the best veg fruit. Well, because obviously, Jared, they make pickles. Oh, <laughs> pickles. Yeah, you, you could just say maybe, oh, you know what? Cucumbers isn't really the right answer. Maybe I should just say that pickles are the best fruit. Uh, there you go. I'm not sure at that point you can call it a fruit anymore, though. What? Really, Jared? Come on. Fine, enjoy your pickle fruit, Brady. Yes! All right, and with that, it is time for... <clears throat> Challenge time. Yeah, it is. So what are we playing today, Brady? We are playing Match the Fruits and Veggies. Oh, good. I love a good matching game, you know? <laughs> yeah, me too. So it's time to go grab your parents, siblings, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, and get everybody in here for this Matching Fruits and Veggies. All right, well, let's get it. Welcome to challenge time. We are playing a little bit of Matching Fruits and Veggies. Crazy game, I know. How this game works, guys, super simple. We're gonna have some veggies. First round's gonna be really simple. It's cucumbers, tomatoes, and lettuce. As we know, one of those is veggies, two of those is fruits. That's not the point. We're playing a matching game. So you guys are gonna have to find the matching pairs on the screen. You will see vegetables, match them. They're gonna see them, we're gonna see them for about, let's say, you gotta see them for five seconds, and then you're gonna have 10 seconds to figure out where they all are hidden and match them up, and then you'll see the answer. Are you guys ready? Here. We go. Wow, did you guys get them all? Of course you did, so smart. Cause that's why we're making it harder. Here we go, round number two. It's not just cucumbers, tomatoes, and lettuce. We're adding onions and potatoes. Good luck. Oh, that was a little bit harder, hey? Well, here we go. Final round of Omega matching vegetables and fruits. Here we go. You got cucumbers, tomatoes, lettuce, red onions, potatoes, carrots, and strawberries. Go. Everybody, you absolutely crushed that matching game. Let's head back into the rest of the video. Wowza, your guys' memory is so cracked. Wait, what are they cracking? <laughs> That's a good one, bro. <laughs> but I don't get it. How can your memory be cracked? Well, Jared, it just means that their memory is like insanely good. What? Uh, okay, I guess that makes a little more sense. Well, I'm glad now that you understand because now you can kind of be hip with the kids. Oh, thanks Brady. I really needed this today. I'm glad I could help. And speaking of helping, that's what we've been talking about all month. Exactly. So why don't we go check in at the Story Lab with Skylar and Sebastian. Oh yeah, let's go. 
Ich gut. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about humility. Well, we take a look at an amazing letter written from prison. Hey, I'm Sebastian. And I'm Skylar. We're talking about humility, which is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. I think one of the best ways of putting others first is by helping them eat well. Mmm, like a box of fudge rounds. I was thinking more of tasty veggie. My relationship with vegetables is complicated. <laughs> How about this vegetable? Are you for real? Yep, world's heaviest carrot, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. That's gonna need a lot of ranch. Then there's this. World's biggest cabbage? Yep. It's like part of some prehistoric jungle. I feel like we should see some dinosaurs roaming past it. Speaking of which. It's a veggie-saurus. <laughs> World's largest mixed vegetable sculpture. Amazing. Slightly terrifying. Our guest today knows a thing or two about veggies. He builds with them? Nope, he grows them. Great. I'm ready. Hi, Phil. We're so excited to talk with you. Hi, guys. Hey, it's good to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. I run Sherith Farms, which is a small market garden that supplies an average of 40 baskets a week, all four seasons of the year, to our 65 families. Wow. What's your farm like? Well, it's a very intense little farm. It's a one quarter acre, if you do the math of how much we actually grow on. But we grow all major food groups. That's what makes a market garden a market garden. It has a variety of crops, a great diversity of crops, and we grow them all. Everything from broccoli and cabbage and beets and carrots and lettuce and kale and bok choy, onions and garlic, and a lot more. So, any watermelons? No watermelons. The watermelons would cover this entire garden. So, you have a special plan of what you plant? Absolutely. I can tell you what I'm planting next year and where I'm going to plant it. We rotate our crops every year into a new space. And so ideally, the same crop isn't planted for almost eight years if I'm managing the garden well. Wow, that's a long time. Okay, it's easier on the soil and allows the garden to produce very well. A good garden is always giving back to the environment. So it's like you have to get to know your dirt. Yes, and that's where it really gets fun because in the creation story of Genesis, God tells the earth to bring forth vegetation. I'm always amazed at how the ground can adapt and respond to good care and love with such energy and life, like this. So farming is really a lot of hard work, right? I do work hard, but you know, everyone works hard. I get to choose the times when I work hard. All the vegetables you provide are such an amazing way to serve the community. Well, I'm glad I can do my part. But really, I'm only one gardener. In fact, that's how I sign my emails to my updates of my customers, one of you gardeners. How's that? Well, I love it when people come to my farm to pick up their produce for the week, and they can see where it all comes from, and they can see the person who's actually involved. But in reality, most of our food comes from people that are laboring, whose names we don't know, whose stories we'll never hear, and they have to work under tough conditions. Wow, I never thought about that. Those people are out there in the dirt, they're working in the cold, they're working in the heat, they're working when it's raining, they're working with the frost on their hands, maybe their gloves aren't working that day, but they don't get to pick the days they get to choose. I feel like I should go find a gardener and thank them right now. Well, that's a great way to think about it. No matter what we grow up to be, there's always someone out there working in all kinds of weather conditions and living conditions to provide food for our families. I am so going to look at my food differently. I hope so. Well, thank you so much for being on here with us, Phil. It was a pleasure seeing you all, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye, Phil. Bye. I want a giant colorful salad right now. As long as there's plenty of this. <laughs> I love how Phil reminded us to pay attention to those growing our veggies behind the scenes. Yeah. Now, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in Philippians, the 11th book in the New Testament. Philippians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the young church he started in the Greek city of Philippi. 
But before Paul, way back in the beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God's very own son, Jesus, came to live among us. When Jesus grew up, he traveled from town to town, teaching and healing. But the religious leaders made plans to get rid of him. Jesus was crucified on a cross and died. But early Sunday morning, Jesus returned to life and lots of his friends saw him. Which is where our story starts. Hey everyone, I'm Chloe. Hi Chloe. For 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus spent time with his friends. Then he returned to heaven to be with God. But the news about Jesus spread. More and more people began to follow Jesus, including Paul. Paul traveled all over, starting brand new churches. On one of his journeys, he spent three months in the Greek city of Philippi, where he shared the news about Jesus with a businesswoman named Lydia. Lydia welcomed the new church to meet in her home, and it grew quickly, even after Paul was thrown in prison. Paul was released and continued his travels. Several more times, he was jailed for sharing about Jesus, but he used his time in prison to write letters to the new churches. In a letter from Rome, Paul encouraged the Philippians to put others ahead of themselves. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. None of you should look out for just your own good. Each of you should also look out for the good of others. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. Jesus is our model. Like the Philippians, we can begin to think and act like Jesus. So let's take a look at some of the things Jesus did. Jesus showed humility by always talking to God first. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. Jesus spent time alone with God over and over. Jesus took time away from the crowds to ask God for help. He did it before starting his ministry, before choosing his disciples, and before giving up his life on the cross. Jesus submitted all his desires and plans to God. Next, Jesus showed humility by spending time with those who seemed unimportant. Come, follow me. Rather than choosing the most important, well-educated people to be his followers, Jesus chose the overlooked and the outcast. He wasn't worried about looking impressive. Jesus said to show humility by giving in secret. When you give to needy people, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Then your giving will be done secretly. That just means when you do something good for others, do it quietly. Don't make it a big deal and do it for show so people will think you're all that. Jesus also said to show humility in our relationships by doing more than is required. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. Jesus taught that when you're told to do something, do it with a great attitude, and then do even more than you have to. In the end, Jesus gave us the most incredible example of humility ever. Paul wrote, In his very nature, he was God. Jesus was equal with God. But Jesus didn't take advantage of that fact. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He was made just like human beings. He was humble and obeyed God completely. He did this even though it led to his death on a cross. Most of us will never be asked to actually die for someone, but every day, we can look for opportunities to set aside the things we want in order to put others first, because Jesus puts us first. The end. Gotta be honest, this one is hard. Yeah, I mean, it's just so easy to default to what I want and what I need. That's right. It takes practice to pay attention to what other people need, and then to find ways of putting them first. So, what's our part in the story? Well, because Jesus put us first, we can live forever with him. Instead of living for ourselves, we have the freedom to put others first. 
just like Jesus did. Just like how Jesus spent time with people who weren't considered important, you can look for the kid that's trying to make a friend instead of trying to get the popular kids to like you. Or like Jesus said to give in secret, you could quietly share a snack with a friend who doesn't have one and you don't have to make a big deal about it. When your mom asks you to take out the trash, you can take it out and then also empty the dishwasher, just like how Jesus said to go the extra mile. None of this is easy to do in our own strength. That's why it's so important to do something else Jesus did. Pray. Exactly. Jesus talked to God first, before anything else. When we take time to do that, we remember how amazing it is that Jesus put us first. Then God can give us the creativity and strength so that we can put others first. I think you've got it. See you next time. Bye, Bye Chloe. Chloe. So here's the thing. Put others first because Jesus put you first. Hey, let's go. Where are we going? We are going to go help Farmer Phil. Uh, OK. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next, next time. time. Let's go. It's great to think about ways we can put others first and live with humility. Yeah, and now we get to put those ideas into action. See, with God's help, we can pay attention to what other people need and find ways to put them first. We can be humble just like Jesus. Remember how Jesus put you first? And he put you and me and everyone first when he willingly gave up his life on the cross for us. Because of what Jesus did, we're able to give the things that we've done to him. When we believe in Jesus, we have the promise of this thing called eternal life. And that's all because of what Jesus did when he put us first. Now, instead of just living for ourselves, we should choose to put others first, just like Jesus did. And it's so important for us to show humility when we do. In fact, that's exactly what humility is. When we do, it makes it easier for people to see how much we care about them, and it helps them to understand just how much God cares about them too. See, our memory verse this month is actually the first part of the passage we read today from Paul's letter in Philippians. Do you know it yet? Well, let's try to read it together. It starts like this. It says, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble and value others more than yourselves. It's from Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Yeah. Stay humble, friends. Value others more than yourself and show them how much you care. So we're going to keep practicing what it means to grow our relationship with God because we use this prayer that invites God to give us the power to live and love like him every day. Boom. So put your hand on your heart. Father God, fill us with your love and help us to love you and everything you have made. And then we point to our eyes. Lord Jesus, help us to see you and to see others the way that you see them too. Point to your ears. Holy Spirit, help us to hear you and give us courage to do what you said. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We love hanging out with you all the time. So uh, that's it. We're going to stay tuned for the So-and-So Show, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye! Those are some scary pigs. What are you doing, John? Uh, I'm going green. <laughs> That's not going to work. Yeah. Oh, it's a power plant. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the
the So and So Show. I'm John. That's Brandon. Hello. And boy, oh boy, do we have a show for you today? That's right, John. And a big surprise. Yeah, we have a wait. We, we have a surprise. I don't lie, John. And this is a surprise that's been over a week in the making. Really? Yep. Oh. <laughs> I, I, are you gonna give me a clue or something about what it is? I, well, do you remember the community garden? Oh, uh, how could I forget? Yeah, John and I have been working in a community garden this month, and it's not just the mm. plants that have grown, we've grown as well. Aww. Uh, we have? Yep. And now, I present to you... <laughs> my first early spring harvest! <laughs> wow! I... I'm speechless. <laughs> I, 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 I don't even know what to say. I know, right? Oh, are those fresh strawberries? Mm -hmm. I love fresh straw. What are you doing? Uh, so sorry, I, okay, okay. That was very rude of me. I didn't even ask. I'm very sorry, okay. May I have a fresh strawberry? No! Ow! <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Are you just gonna eat them all? They're mine. Okay. All of them. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What about what about these um what about these uh, radishes? I love radishes. They're like spicy. Hey! Oh! My preciousness. What is wrong? What about the lettuce? Can mm. I have the lettuce? No. Kale? Kale. No, the kale's no. good. No. What about what about the grape grapefruit? No. Oh my! So are you telling me that I can't try any of it? No! Then why did you bring it in here, Brandon? I wanted you to see all my hard work. What? You could have just shown me a picture if you didn't want me to eat any of it. That wouldn't do it justice. Oh, oh, I'll Please. show you justice. No, no, I said. Give me that. Okay, that's mine! My apple! Ah! Oh, oh, oh. No! No! Oh. Ah. Oh. No! What have we done? It's Bible story time with Kellen. I must say, that is one way to eat your vegetables. But they're all gone, they're ruined. Well, can't you grow anymore? Well, I mean, this is just the early spring harvest. The first wave, if you will. <laughs> there should be more stuff coming in a little later. Good, good. Then what are you gonna do with all the food? Sounds like there's gonna be way too much food for you to eat. Alone. Huh. I don't know, I haven't thought about it. Well, maybe today's story will give you some ideas. Take it away, Kellen. Today's Bible verses come from the book of Philippians, which is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to a church he started in the Greek town of Philippi. Now, Paul wrote many letters to churches, mostly when things were not going well at that church. But he wrote to the Church of Philippi when things were going great. And he wanted to encourage them, but also warn them about a few things. Here's how he begins this part of the letter. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. None of you should look out just for your own good. Each of you should also look out for the good of others. Paul was saying that we shouldn't just think about our own wants and needs. We should think about the needs of other people too. We should be humble. And here to help us remember just that is the cheer squad. Yo, yo, Jackie. What up, Dee Dee? you want to tell these folks around here? Girl, listen to this. Don't just do, 
what you want to do. Be humble, don't just try to get ahead. Be humble, do not be proud, and do not be selfish. Value others more than yourself. Be humble. Boom! You're not breaking that verse down any better than that. Be humble, don't be selfish, and put others first. That's what Paul wrote. Let's see what he wrote next. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. In his very nature, he was God. Jesus was equal with God. But Jesus didn't take advantage of that fact. Think and act as Jesus did. Whoa, that's a tall order. But one of the reasons Jesus came was to give us an example of how we should live. So when we deal with one another, we should think of how Jesus lived. Let's hear what the cheer squad has to say. Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee. Now you know we're the best. Oh yeah. But we gotta be humble, right? That's right. And Jesus showed us the perfect way. When someone needs a friend, think and act like Jesus did. When you lose or when you win, think and act like Jesus did. You can't go wrong, you must admit when you think and act like Jesus did. Nice. Paul wrote that Jesus was equal to God. Jesus could have demanded that people honor and serve him, but that's not how Jesus was. Now, listen to what Paul wrote next. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He was made just like human beings. He appeared as a man. He was humble and obeyed God completely. He did this even though it led to his death. Even worse, he died on a cross. Jesus came to earth to serve others, and he did that in so many ways. But his greatest act of service was that he humbled himself to die on the cross for you and for me. He put us, he put you first. Let's hear one more from the squad. Didi, do you know what time it is? Yeah, it's about 11.15. Exactly! And it's also time to get humble. Oh, come on! H-U-M-B-L-E What does it mean to show humility? H-U-M-B-L-E It's serving other people instead of worrying about me. H-U-M-B-L-E Jesus came to earth to show us how to be. Let's give it up for the cheer squad. So there you have it. It's important that we put others first, before ourselves even, because that's what Jesus did for us. So for instance, we shouldn't be so proud of ourselves that we refuse to share our fruits and vegetables. I think that seems best, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Thanks, Kellen. <laughs> no problem, guys. I'll see you next time. Will do. See ya. Listen, I really am sorry for ruining our, your vegetables and, and fruits. Are you kidding me? This was my fault. I should have been putting you first and, instead of trying to be the first to put all the food in my mouth. <laughs> so I'm sorry. And you know what? I, I'm gonna have another harvest and uh, next time you can help me in the garden. Is that oh, all right? Yeah, Thanks, Okay. Brandon. That really means a lot. Oh, <laughs> look at that one blueberry. No! Oh no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's a habit. I, I'll, I'll find it for you. It's sorry. All right. It's all right. <laughs> Reveal the question. Oh, okay. So what are some ways you put others first? It can be as simple as holding the door for someone or just asking how their day is going or actually stopping what you're doing and helping someone who needs it. <sighs> yeah, you can also listen to someone and hear what they're saying instead of just waiting for your turn to talk. Yeah. And usually when you listen, 
you can see how to best help. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Oh, well, I guess that's the show. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, how is it? Oh, so good. <laughs> you can barely taste the floor. Yes. That's all for this week, everyone. Uh huh. We'll see you next time for a brand new show. I'm gonna find you another one. No, you don't need to. You don't really, you really don't need to. Oh, wait. You got any melon? Here's a strawberry. Oh, thank you. Oh, so good. <laughs>